Hello everyone and welcome to another most exciting game from the 2019 FIDE World Cup. Even though it just ended, a lot of you have already suggested it and it's the game uh, Nihal Sarin vs uh, Elter Safarli. Uh, we already mentioned that we're probably going to cover this game as uh, Nihal had a promising position and uh, it's very interesting what came out of this game. Uh, now, some of you may not know this, uh, but uh, Nikhal Sarin was uh, included in a training camp uh, with, uh, well, s s six of uh, very promising young uh, Indian grandmasters. I don't know if all of them were grandmasters. Uh, I know at least three were grandmasters. Uh, had a training camp with Vladimir Kramnik, and, uh, well, the, this is now... Uh, oh, even though Nikhal was a very strong player, it's uh, very interesting to see what uh, training with uh, a legend like Vladimir Kramnik uh, uh, improved in all of them. Uh, so without further ado, let's check it out. A lot of you have requested it and it's a, it's a, well, pretty long theoretical struggle in the opening. So we're not going to dwell too long on that. E4, E5, uh, as the game is Rui Lopez. Uh, knight of 3, Knight to C6, Bishop to B5. The Rui Lopez is on the board. A6, Morphe's defense. Uh, bishop to A4, Knight to F6. Now castles uh, with Bishop to E7 and now Rook to E1. Uh, b5 pushing the bishop back bishop to b3 uh, and now d6 with c3 uh, making room for the bishop on c2 also preparing the advancement of the pawn uh, with d3 or d4 uh, we have castles by black and now h3 and here black goes for the brayer uh, brayer defense with knight to b8 this knight is now going over to d7 uh, with d4 by white uh, knight b to d7 and now knight b to d2 the knight is now going to f1 and then either to e3 or g3 depending on what black plays uh, bishop to b7 and now bishop to c2 uh, we have rook to e8 and knight to f1 as planned bishop to f8 and uh, this has been played so many times that there are over 2000 games in the database uh, uh, from tournament play with this exact same position so this is nothing new to either of them uh, knight to g3, uh, we have g6 now taking away the f5 and h5 squares from white knight and also preparing bishop to g7. Uh, we have a4 uh, by Nikhal and now bishop to g7. Uh, bishop to d3 now putting pressure on b5, you want to play a captures on b5 and win a pawn. Uh, and here comes c6 just defending it. Uh, you can't... Uh, 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 well, just defending it. Uh, we have bishop to g5 now, pinning the knight, developing uh, the bishop, h6, bishop back to e3. So, like I said, all has been played before. Queen to c7, developing the queen, connecting rooks, and queen to d2 now. Now putting pressure on the h6 pawn, black has to deal with this. We have king to h7, and now there have been a few moves that have been played in position. D captures on e5 has been played, rook to a2 has been played, rook to a3 has been played. Queen to c2 has been played, as the king now uh, nicely occupies the h7 square. Uh, but here the move uh, Nihal plays is a new move in the position, b4. Uh, uh, which comes with the idea of grabbing more space on the queen side, which you'll see in the game. Uh, and it is already as of move 20 that we have a completely new game, uh, which is uh, not odd as uh, th there's quite a lot of theory uh, around the Rue Lopez. Uh, knight to b6 now, uh, and we have d captures on e5. d captures on e5 and a5 now, pushing the knight further back. We have knight bd7 and now c4. Uh, preparing to grab even more space with c5. If you play c5, this light square bishop is just a disgusting piece. That's no, no way to treat your bishop. Uh, and also, if you ca capture on c4, then you get bishop captures. You go after f7. After rook defends, you're going to go rook ac1. And the white has a has an excellent, excellent position. Uh, so, uh, after this uh, c4 move, we have rook a to d8 by Safarli. Of course, you want to put your rook uh, uh, on an open d file that uh, now the white queen also occupies. Queen back to a2, and here comes a move that will come to hunt Safarli uh, very soon. He plays king to g8. Probably the. Uh, well, maybe to get the king uh, off of this diagonal, but also to add another defender to the f7 pawn. But this will not work uh, out the way he planned. Bishop to c2 uh, by Nihal, and now comes queen to d6, going after the b4 pawn. But now a brilliant move by Nihal, he plays bishop to b3. Uh, which comes uh, with a question, do you want to grab the pawn on b4? The problem with capturing on b4 uh, is c5 and now even though black can capture on c5 white is threatening uh, bishop captures on f7 so having your king there doesn't really help uh, but okay for example if you defended rook e7 now you get rook 
e to b1 and how do you how do you save the queen bishop captures on f7 is the threat this would open up discovery uh, against the black queen you have to uh, waste another move move your king but still bishop captures on f7 uh, you have to move the queen queen c3 now you get bishop captures on g6 even that king captures knight f5 uh, and uh, the, the position is very enjoyable basically it plays itself uh, you, you can go rook back to e8 if you don't want to lose material knight h4 check king h7 and now even queen to f7 threatening checkmate once you prevent this rook g8 uh, you get bishop captures on h6 and it's uh, well it's it's just over black black has no more moves uh, so after bishop to b3 we have queen back to e7 adding another defender here uh, getting the queen away from the d file as of course you know that the rook is coming to occupy the d file uh, so rook a to d1 and now black would really like to play c5 you want to play c5 and free your light square bishop uh, but let's say you play c5 again you're going to have problems defending the f7 pawn there, it's just too much problem for example b captures knight captures bishop captures you again get the queen away from the defense of the f7 pawn now you play captures on b5 open up a uh, an attack against the f7 pawn and now after the queen goes back you have to defend it or something you're either gonna uh, for example queen to e7 you're either gonna push b6 or you're gonna allow this capture and get a pass pawn uh, already on a6 you can go knight h4 threaten to capture here as the f pawn is uh, not only attacked it, it's also pinned so a lot of uh, very nice ideas for white here so uh safarli went to rook to c8 uh, and now comes knight to h4 uh putting pressure on this g6 pawn and uh, black no longer wants to constantly keep an eye on this so king to f8 uh, the f pawn is no longer pinned uh, and now c5 and now if you look at this bishop that's just uh that's just a very ugly bishop and uh, the other pieces are not doing a, uh, such a great job either uh so far plays knight to b8 and uh, what what is knight to b8 doing the, the knight isn't really going anywhere the knight will come back to d7 but if you want to at least try and trade some rooks along the d file uh you have to uh, for the moment put it there and here nihal plays a wonderful move rook to d6 and just just stifling black's position completely uh i i, I caught a glimpse of uh a chess 24 coverage with uh jan gustafsson and uh can't remember uh the, the other guy's name uh lawrence trent uh and uh, magnus carlson uh <laughs> had a phone call uh at, at the time they were checking out this position and carlson said that about this position that uh uh it's uh it's like black is down a piece uh, black is so bad that he could well he he it, it's as if he was uh, down a piece uh and he also shown uh, showed a very nice line for example rook to c7 if you want to bring another defender here uh then just knight to f5 will uh win the queen the queen has nowhere to go uh the rook is covering all of the squares uh, so the, the queen is trapped even if you capture once uh, you're gonna lose the queen and and you could pretend that you gave it away for some material but still rook d7 bishop c5 uh, black has no moves whatsoever in this position so it's uh it, it's very hard uh, uh, to, to play something like this uh, but okay after rook d6 uh, safarli decided that he was not going to get his queen trapped he played rook e to d8 uh, offering a rook trade and also uh, freeing some uh, room for the queen uh, but Nihal went in for it uh, just the same we have knight g to f sorry knight g to f5 uh, attacking the queen we have a capture once so a peace sacrifice but should should not be a problem uh, queen to c7 the c7 is now free for the queen and now knight captures on g7 king captures and now of course you'll see it bishop captures on h6 beautiful beautiful moves king captures and now rook captures on f6 with check now the problem is if you go to g7 just rook captures on f7 with check wins the queen and you don't really have uh, in enough compensation your pieces aren't really doing all that much uh so after king to g5 was played nihal played rook to f5 check we have king back to h6 and here uh nihal just uh played uh well uh, a lot of moves are good here but he played the absolute strongest move queen to e2 uh, and it was in this position that uh, uh elter safari resigned the game as there is nothing more you can do the queen is coming to h5 and you cannot do anything uh to prevent it uh, you might try running away king to g7 but still you get queen to g4 check and uh, slowly but surely uh, you are you are getting destroyed king f8 the queen is coming to h5 you're, you're putting more and more pressure on the f7 square and there's really not not much you can do here so 
uh, it, it would be pointless to continue. Uh, so yeah, after this uh, very nice uh, uh, queen to e2 move, uh, Elter Safari resigned the game and another excellent victory for Nihal Sarin, who I think, I don't know if, if there's anyone in the World Cup so far with three wins, uh, all in classical. So Nihal uh, beat uh, uh, Jorge Cori in the previous round with both wins with the white and black pieces and now a victory against Elter Safarli. Uh, so it seems that uh, the the Kr uh, Vladimir Kramnik training camp is definitely paying off, and uh, it's going to be well if he continues playing like this, just complete uh, annihilation of his opponents. Uh, you know, he he could get a, a very uh, a very far uh, in the uh, well uh, in, into into the World Cup, and maybe who knows, maybe even uh, grab a seat in the candidates tournament. As I don't think. Uh, ever since Bobby Fischer played in the 19 uh, 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 in the 1959 candidates tournament in Bled Belgrade and Zagreb, uh, I, I believe he was 15 at the time. So uh, I don't know if uh, or, or maybe 16. I don't know if anyone that young uh, played in the candidates tournament uh, ever since. So it would be very interesting, but th there is a long way to go from there. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Oliver Rauprich and Marcel Fernandez for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the coverage of the FIDE World Cup uh, and of course checking up on your wonderful suggestions. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your weekend.